Hi, everybody. I'm Ginny Schuster with Who Do You Know? And we all know that life is about who do you know? Today, I am excited to have Ken Weibel with us, and he is a chef. I met him on LinkedIn. I saw this beautiful picture of a delicious dessert, and I knew I had to connect with him. And I'm thinking, now, what took him into that field? How is it that he creates such beautiful desserts that are appetizing, as my mother would call it? So welcome, Ken. Thank you for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. This is quite a delight and a treat because it's outside of the norm of what I do up here at the ranch. So, Ken, you're at, at um, Vista Verde Guest Ranch outside of Steamboat. So do you want to tell us how you ended up getting there? What was the path that you took to get where you are? Ultimately, it's it's like a 20-year journey of culinary a adventure that I've had of various sorts uh, between restaurants, catering, private chef, personal chef, lessons, uh, even kitchen cleaning I started doing last year in COVID because <laughs> catering kind of went out the window with COVID. So um, I was also most recently a guest chef at a restaurant I helped open two years ago in Highlands Ranch uh, in the Denver metro area. Um, but ultimately I was looking for something a little more, I guess, all inclusive for myself because I was so scattered uh, doing so many different things. Um, I started to also because I actually have a twilight goal of running and well owning and operating a bed and breakfast type of uh, facility where I could be like a private chef for a small group of rotating people um, on an ongoing basis, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, type of thing, because what I've discovered as the personal or private chef is that one of my favorite things to do was that uh, those retreats that take place up in the Colorado mountains of various groups, it could be business, it could be yoga, health and wellness, uh, family. And uh, I take the burden off of all those culinary responsibilities and come up with wonderful things. And it's such a, a a pleasant, delightful, intimate gathering when you're able to do something like that. And so I developed this sort of dream of one day, uh, and that would be my final destination, would be owning and operating that bed and breakfast here in Colorado, because Colorado is oh. amazing. In oh, so many isn't ways. it? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. So you have a lot of things on your plate as far as should you go that route, you have to think about being an entrepreneur. And there are so many things that go get involved with being an entrepreneur. I'm sure you're finding that out if you don't already know. Oh, you that's know true. Are you going to have employees and your accounting? How do you set up the business and how do you network and get your name out there? That sort of stuff. I'm sure you've thought about that, but you seem to be getting your name out. Well, that's part of it, too. I was essentially blessed in, in, a, in such a way. I could never do culinary 100 percent while I was married. Uh, because it, I found it to be harmful to the marriage, you could say. And so I did a lot. That's why I did a lot of like small things here and there. But I was very fortunate that I was able to do things like be a business and marketing consultant for the South Metro Denver Chamber of Commerce. And nice. so I, I developed these skills to not only network, but understand the value of, of people around me and, and their contributions and being able to either recognize or utilize uh, the various people around me for that assistance of the things I don't want to do. Um, I want to be in the kitchen, period. <laughs> Good point. And so you're bringing in the connections. You know, it's all about who do you know and how can you network and who knows who to help you out. But also, I notice, Ken, you got to have a clear goal. And it sounds to me as though you have come up with it. Well, that's true. And, and so what happened was when I was looking for more consolidated uh, work for me to do uh, this last year in the Denver metro area, I started to look at the job openings occurring in hospitality uh, so that I can get more of that under my belt. And I first applied to a position at the Amara Resort in Sedona, Arizona. And that made me realize I was willing to relocate to some extent even though uh, my kids are in the Denver metro area, 
but they're getting older enough where I can have some gap in between visits and that's okay. But that didn't work out. And then this job here at Vista Verde came up and I simply just applied, not really knowing too much about it. But the more I looked at the website <laughs> and the blogs that people write about this place, the YouTube video that people make about this place, I soon understood that this was an actual dream job of its own. And I could not believe that, for example, they have a down season here every November and April uh, where they close. Okay. And as the sous chef here, they are giving me paid vacation on those two months. Ooh, nice. And I have not had a paid vacation in over 10 years. <laughs> Thank you, this, he says. So I've, I've just, I'm, I'm, it blows my mind to even just think about it. Um, so I'll be returning to the Denver Metro uh, at the end of uh, uh, October. And then most of November, I'll be in the Denver Metro and I don't have to work. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you get to visit with your kids and be one-on-one -on -one with them. That's huge. Exactly. Family is where it's at. It is. It is. And then when my kids like, uh, well, my, my kids are 18 and, and 15, right? My right. daughter is 15. I will love to spend time back in the metro area with her. Oh, but I once, bet. But once she leaves the nest, well, all those Novembers and Aprils off, I want to travel. <laughs> there you go. Maybe with them, maybe without them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about Verde Vista. Um, you might as well brag a little bit about it. It sounds like a terrific guest ranch. It's it's a, it's, it's amazing, really. Um, it's a uh, well all inclusive uh, guest ranch. And imagine this: you have the choice when you arrive of doing things like all day horseback riding, fly fishing. Uh, hiking, uh, mountain biking. Um, in the winter, you can do snowshoeing, you can do cross-country skiing, um, snowmobiles, uh, you name it. And I mean, wow. the summer, they're doing those paddle boards on the different lakes around here. Up here, there's like uh, five state parks up here too. That's how amazing it is. Oh my <laughs> goodness. So how, how many acres is it? Well, I want to say it's about 100 acres here but it backs up to national forests. So they have oh. access to, to trails and whatnot that go on for millions of acres, it seems like. So it's, uh, it's oh, really amazing. That's fun. So being a chef, do you get to choose the meals that you want or are you given a little bit of direction? Well, um, they have kind of a set menu, if you will, um, and do a, a formal dinner on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Nice. But th those change up a little bit based on kind of what we can get in. Uh, it, it's kind of nice that here at the ranch, we still get the food truck deliveries from the, uh, but we have to use several to get what we need. But we also are blessed by getting eggs from a nearby ranch, bacon from a nearby ranch. And so those types of things are uh, readily available um, and very nice. Um, but uh, the, the, as a sous chef, right? I just kind of help with everything. Um, and then a lot of nights it's, uh, hey, we need a, a, an hors d'oeuvre for the happy hour that occurs, which is every night. And they do sometimes the same things, but then I come along and now that I'm here, I introduce a lot of new things. And I'm, I'm mainly just looking at things that probably need to get used before they go bad. But at the same time, um, and, and I think you, you mentioned earlier about how the the, the dish I you, you noticed looked good. And yeah. I actually, I don't have any type of culinary education, but I do have a degree in graphic design. I am an oh. artist. <laughs> yes, definitely. I can see it come out in that plate. And I think you almost have to have that ability when you're a chef, don't you? Well, uh, creativity is, is huge, yeah. but also understanding that there's, you know, food can also be a feast for the eyes, right? Um, you know, and, and that makes it a lot more fun. 
<laughs> and that's very important, as my mother would always say, as I mentioned earlier, she always liked the word appetizing as well as appetizing. <laughs> oh, I never heard that. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah, she was original. That's cool. So you get to plan the whole meal the whole way through. So you have to do the appetizers. You have to do the not have to, but I'm sure you enjoy the regular main menu as well as dessert every single time? Or is that basically the, the formal dinners and then you have a lot more slack for breakfast and lunch? They actually do have, um, I want to say, a really great team approach to everything here. Because um, not only uh, do I work with the executive chef, but the food and beverage director, um, is also a chef and the two of them uh, do major contributions. And then we have uh, four different line cooks that also work with us as well as a pastry chef. And wow. It is a robust culinary operation here. Um, the, the formal dinners are export extraordinary because they, they offer two choices of appetizer and then three choices of entree. So you might have a, a, a fish, uh, a, a major protein, and then a vegetarian option. Okay. Uh, and then we can make variations from those dishes. But but those formal dinners are things you would get at the nicest restaurants in Denver, for example. Um, Give me an idea of what size groups you have there. Okay. Like right now, we have 30 guests uh, staying in the various cabins. Um, in the summer, when the larger cabins have entire families, including kids, it can expand typically up to 60 people. Um, and that's about it. Um, okay. Average is probably 30 to 35. Now, is it uh, different families or is it usually um, one full extended family? Oh, well, the cabins themselves uh, will hold various families. Uh, but uh, strangely enough, uh, as an example, um, the group that's in here now is just here uh, Sunday through Thursday morning. Okay. Thursday afternoon, uh, one man uh, bought out the entire ranch and is bringing 40 of his friends. Oh, wow. To celebrate his 50th birthday. <laughs> no kidding. How fun. Now that's a celebration. And these cabins are really nice. Um, are they? Very, very well appointed. And I, I say all inclusive, right? If you tell them, I, I want Cabernet Sauvignon from a particular vineyard every day. I want Pellegrino. I want uh, LaCroix. I want uh, Jack Daniels uh, for every night, for my Coke every night. <laughs> I mean, that's what they put in there. And then they have a, there's a hot tub on the patio. And uh, some of the neat YouTube videos are, are people that are in their hot tub, then they jump over the ledge into the snow <laughs> and, oh. they get, and then they, and they get back in the hot tub. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so fun. Wow. That would be a memorable 50th birthday. Holy crow. Wow. I think so. I yeah. think so because he even, you know, requested very specific menu items for okay. the and it'll be uh, Thursday through Sunday that his group will be here. And, you know, and what a delight for us. <laughs> oh, I know. And are you allowed to interact with a lot of the people? So you get to meet those people, you know, the chef get introduced to them or do you kind of lay low? Um, what's interesting is uh, as the sous chef, I don't have the opportunity to do a lot, but the ranch hands, the wranglers, the housekeepers, the, you know, so many of the staff, the guides out there, right? They, they do. And they even call it, it's the, it's the secret sauce here at uh, Vista Verde because the guests love having these different, and it's such a varied age group too, that come in and work here. Interesting. And, and they have their own stories uh, to tell. And then the people that come here just love having the people sit down, enjoy happy hour with them, enjoy some of the meals with them. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a really like all inclusive. I'm not kidding. There's so much to do here. 
Oh, that sounds wonderful. I did visit the website and it looks so delightful. It even shows a map of some of the, the different buildings and the, I don't know whether you call them cottages, different houses for the different people or and or the lodge that probably holds some people if they want to sleep there as well. That's true. The, uh, the main building itself does have uh, three rooms, but only one of them has the hot tub. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's for the birthday boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where he's staying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So if, if they're hiring, what kind of people are they looking for? When you want to put in, a, should someone listening be interested in getting hired on there? Give us an idea of what type of people they enjoy having hands-on there. Um, I think a lot of the staff here are, uh, for example, um, I see so many different degrees. So it's not a particular degree. It happens to be, I think, people that love horses, for example, okay. uh, come in, uh, kids in college, right? Come here in the summer and work. Uh, kids after college, come here and work for a season or two and it gives them sort of like some ranch type experience I think um, but it's also so beautiful year round and it, you know even I on my day off I could go with a group to go fly fishing if I wanted to um, on my day off I could go get a massage I could you know get all sorts of different things and have well, they do massage there also Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding. It is a ton of things. They even have like leatherworking class, photography classes, um, cooking classes, which is I'm going to get on in the wintertime. Wow. Um, they have wine tastings. Um, they literally have a wine cellar here bigger than any restaurant I've seen in Denver um, full of different wines because they, they do wine pairings with the formal dinners. And then they offer these bottles for sale. Uh, to the guest if they want. And so they're able to you know, utilize uh, A, the space, but B, um, really try to target the, the needs and wants of the clientele in some way. So do they have to, when they sign up to come there, do they have to know ahead of time what they want to do, whether it's wine tasting or horseback riding, all those different things, the leather work? They might have a good idea uh, before they get here, but once they get here, they have the opportunity to change, um, sign up or whatever they wish. I imagine many don't have the final decision until maybe even the day of. Because they probably are more descriptive and getting on site, it's probably easier to decide and see what's available there. Sure, sure. Uh, but they have wonderful people like, you know, I mentioned uh, 30 people right now, um, up to 60. Well, there's over 70 people on staff. It's a little smaller oh. right now as wow. a lot of kids have returned to college or other, they've taken other jobs elsewhere. So our staff is a little bit reduced, but it seems as though there are always more staff than guests here. And so it gives, uh, I think, a really good sense of, um, customer service that is yes. really top notch. It sounds terrific. Now you told me at the beginning that you were a good storyteller. Do you have a good story to tell? Oh, well, <laughs> um, like one of my best stories is my culinary journey, uh, but also um, my love of, uh, I, I think food itself is also fantastic. I'm an only child, but I, I ended up uh, getting as a, a total blessing, exchange students uh, to uh, spend some time with me growing up. And in return, I went to visit them in their countries. Nice. So at the age of 16, I'm traveling to Egypt by myself. Oh, <laughs> wow. To spend time with an exchange student uh, that had spent the year with us. And, and then I also basically hooked up with another group of students that was doing some traveling around uh, Egypt. Um, but that set the stage, I think, for the rest of my life. And when I got home from Egypt, sitting in my kitchen was a boy from uh, <laughs> La Spezia, Italy. 
And oh, he pasta. And I, he and I became like brothers, really. And so not only did I go to Italy after that year of high school, my family came at some point and Nico was our tour guide around Italy. I came back again in the spring break of my senior year, uh, basically though, to just ask permission if it was okay if I spent a year with them in Italy. <laughs> fair is fair. He was with us for a year. Can't I be with you for a year? Yep, and they, they were obviously very delighted. And so my first year out of high school, I spent a year in Italy and that really, uh, really sort of nailed down a true passion for food by totally because now was it I, pasta and um the italian i i have friends who go over to italy all the time and they have gotten to love the wine there and the food which mostly i believe is pasta but, but maybe not Oh, it's so many things. Um, one of the most extraordinary things is that, that, that Sunday afternoon family meal, which has pasta is one of 30 things sitting on the table. Oh, uh, <laughs> wow. Someone was cooking in the, the kitchen. Yeah, the Italian style of cooking is not necessarily built around pasta, but the, the Italian style, and I even call myself an Italian style chef, and that is layering flavors with the freshest possible ingredients. And by doing so, you can build so many extraordinary things. Uh, lasagna is a great example of that because you're building sauces, you're building components, and then you build it together and it makes a beautiful thing. Uh, but they do that with meats. I mean, the Tuscan steak is extraordinary and it's so simple. <laughs> Now, is it because it's marinated or what? what is the secret besides what sauces or just it's time? Just a, it's like, a, it's just a huge, delicious piece of beef that they grill uh, with a little salt and pepper, maybe a little olive oil, and that's it. And it just, it's beautiful. Unbelievable. But everywhere you go in Italy, you travel one mile and the food and the language starts to change. Really? So they have, um, give, what is Italian? Um, I think of it as mostly Spanish. Am I, is there Italian? Yes, so the Italian language is one of the basically romantic languages that, that came from Latin. And so it's oh. similar, but there is not a lot of crossover with Spanish or French, uh, you know, or Portuguese for that matter. They tend to have their own uh, words for things, uh, especially in the dialects that occur in, all throughout Italy. They have their own words for different things, you know, so. So did one, you learn like, Italian? I did. I still actually speak Italian. Um, Nice. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how, except that I did go to the University of Florence in Italy, and okay. they, they did uh, have a, an oral examination, they said, uh, to get entrance into the school. And so I not only studied my senior year of high school, I was going to the Italian Cultural Center in San Diego to take classes. Once I got there, I took classes with a... Um, group of foreigners <laughs> if you will and then once, once once i got down to florence i then had a, a private tutor uh so that i could nail this uh, entrance exam and so i go into the entrance exam and it's some professor behind a bunch of books and paperwork and he just not even looking at me saying what's your name and like he's filling out a form like where are you from and he's like three or four simple questions <laughs> that was it <laughs> and that was but, it and you were in huh but what was neat though was that by december like i had a, i struggled as the classes started uh but by december i was thinking in, in, in italian dreaming in italian wow and so it's, it's like a, a, a switch was flipped you know and boom i was good to go 
And I, I think that's the best way to actually learn a language is by just getting right in there into the country of the language that you want. I know in the beginning, I'm sure that your brain is swimming with all the, the words and trying to keep up with it, but it's going to be faster as opposed to taking years to learn a language, you know, as you said, couple months, and you're not only dreaming, completely thinking in Italian. Got to be tough. Yeah, Take lots of aspirin. Because <laughs> <laughs> it hurts the brain. <laughs> Well, you're absolutely fascinating. Is there, can people get in touch with you if they want to know more about chef life? If this is something of interest, how do you reach out to those people who want to follow in your tracks? Oh, probably the best, just like yourself. Uh, LinkedIn is a, a fantastic communication tool where we tend to focus on business related topics. Um, okay. As opposed to the other social media channels that get a little more frivolous, if you will, right. on content. But um, I'm also, I call Facebook my playground and I will share information with anybody that wants to reach out because they can send me a message without even connecting with me uh, on Facebook. And I will say, okay. That. Okay. Um, but LinkedIn, um, I accept all connection requests on LinkedIn, and I'm actively uh, connecting with other chefs, especially on LinkedIn. Perfect. Um, so, that, so that I can have that ongoing conversation in the industry. But also those that are interested, they can also then just reach out to me on any level and, and love talking about it um, in any way. I can see that it's your passion. What a great job you have. And I love, I love the... Uh, place you're working it just looks so super it's 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 incredible it really is uh, what a fascinating life and it's all about who do you know that's true and it's sort of like some of the smaller blessings that i've come across for example the hr person that i reached first reach out to that got this job set up and went through everything gave me the tour and whatnot the nicest HR person I've ever worked with. No kidding. The, the food and beverage director, uh, his name is uh, Charlie. <laughs> um, and he is truly the nicest chef I've ever worked with by far. Um, that those personalities truly run the gamut out there. <laughs> well, you may not, you may not reach your goal because you're enjoying where you are. Oh yeah. And, and I, in fact, I, I think I will be here for a good 10 years because I'm going to enjoy that lifestyle of yeah. traveling in the off season and yeah. building, building some wealth so that I can't afford to finance uh, my dream job in the future. Right. And that time off to reconnect with yourself is just so important. And especially, as you said, you've got two kids, 18 and 15, this is a good time to free up and be spend some time with them. Exactly. So, you know, that's an important, the teen years is very important. And they don't know that they need to learn so much from their dad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they think they know it all. <laughs> well, I re really appreciate the sharing of information about who do you know and how you got into this through all your connections, that's so important to share with people that really anything they do, they can set their, just set your mind to it and start reaching out there and connecting with people. And you're a great person to connect with. And thank you. This was a delight. <laughs>